Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink I have in sample form, it's by Dye Mine. It's Imperial Blue. Amusingly enough, we've already done Imperial Purple, but this is most assuredly a purple. Now, my camera is turning it more of a blue purple, but it is a genuine purple, and I shall fix that in post. Yeah. The two pens I used were these. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point with a broad nib. And then I also used this pen by A.G. Spaulding and Brothers, which, although it has a medium nib, they're actually manufactured in Japan, so it's a Japanese medium, so it's kind of more like a European fine. Now, this is a purple. In fact, it kind of reminded me of Diamine's Sapphire Blue, because Sapphire Blue is actually a purple. Um, or it's like a blue that is so close to purple, it, I actually just call it purple. However, I couldn't find my swatch for that. So, here's Imperial Blue. Here's <laughs> Noodler's Purple Martin. Because honestly, I don't have anything quite like this, and so I was struggling to find matches. Here's Noodler's North African Violet, which is, I'd say, just a bit lighter, but quite similar. And lastly, Noodler's La Couleur Royale. I just massacred that, which is very similar, maybe a bit darker, uh, maybe just like a teeny smidge more blue. Now, for fun, I thought I'd see what this ink can stand up to. Uh, amusingly, against water, Water actually did a pretty good job of breaking it up, and if anything, it washed away more of that blue. Denatured alcohol did absolutely nothing. Hydrogen peroxide kind of broke it up a bit, turned it a bit lighter purple. Ammonia pen flush really kind of started to break it up, again, mostly turned it purple. And then one third bleach solution turned it bright pink, which was amusing. Now, let's check out the chromatography because the chromatography is also amusing. Now, here's how you're supposed to do it. I put a drop, and you can see that this purple is fighting. It does not want to move. So there's this solid band of purple. And then we get into this sort of like mixy bitch <laughs> batch here. I may have to fix that. Wow, okay. Uh, where it turns more like the color in the swatch. And then there's this bright sky blue. That is not, that is not my camera turning it a highlighter color like it does sometimes. It is actually that color. Here's why I let it dry, which is not what you're supposed to do. And literally the only difference is the initial dot was a bit darker. Oh god, I'm going to have to fix that in editing. Anyways, uh, paper test, top down in density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. I shall attempt to hold this still, but I am so ridiculously caffeinated right now. Yeah. So, the Japanese medium took 6 seconds to dry. The broad took 11, which is really not bad. And as you can see, there is shading. In fact, there is even a bit of a halo effect in the wettest parts. And I was sort of surprised to note that there's actually a bit more shading in the broad. Uh, just, yeah, but, yeah, amusing. It's purple. <laughs> it's purple. <laughs> uh, I always get kind of annoyed when an ink claims to be a color that it's not, but I don't know, it's kind of amusing. And then what's even more amusing is when you add water, it just gets more purple. And uh, kind of like we saw in the chromatography, there is some that washed away, but that solid, bright purple really remains. So if you had to recover that, you could. But yeah, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. I s maybe right there, but that's human error. So, yeah. <laughs> Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Where, again, this is so very purple. The Japanese medium took 7 seconds. The broad took 10. And again, you get... A halo effect, you get shading, and I note in here somewhere that uh, you start to see these hints of this red-black sheen around the halos. And actually, I think you see it in this N and no. I don't know if it's going to get on camera, but yeah, it's there. But yeah, very well behaved in that there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. Uh, and again, the water test, like there's a, a purple, like that brighter purple, very in there, doesn't want to move. It's sort of mostly the blue that washes away. It did start to feather and explode, but that is very near the bottom of the page. And this is like the bottom of the sheet, so that might have something to do with it. Just food for thought. Next up is Tumbleway River Paper. 
which is known for drawing out dry times, which it, it did a bit. The uh, Japanese medium took 13 seconds. The broad only took 17, which really wasn't too bad. And I don't know if you can notice, but there's a bit of a halo effect here. <laughs> This is exactly what I mean when I say halo effect. This is that to such a degree that maybe I should reference this in future videos. See that dark outline in the wettest parts? That's what I mean when I say that there's a halo. And here you definitely get a halo sheen. It's this dark, like, reddish black. It's actually kind of beautiful. Uh, you get it in the words as well. It's just easiest to see it in the scrubby. Uh, so, as you can probably tell, you get some shading. And it's actually quite nice, but uh, I also forgot to mention that the flow here is just slightly wet. I'd say it's somewhere between a 5.5 and a 6 out of 10. It just goes. You can kind of feel that there's a teeny bit of wetness, so if you have a pen that's out of control wet, maybe don't use this, but, uh, because it's not going to help you any, but yeah, there's, a uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread. I said there's some echo, but where there's echo, and actually, I'm going to turn it over so you can look. First of all, this is amusing. Do you see how that's bright blue? Now, of course, this is human error. That was where I was laying it on thick to try and get some of that sheet and halo. So this is human error. But this is a medium, dark medium ink, and this is obscenely thin paper. So Echo, I mean, it's always a personal taste thing, but if you're sensitive to it, maybe something to be aware of. Now, this paper loves to let ink slide away when you add more water. That did not happen here. That's actually impressively dark for this paper. Now, as you can see, what remains is much more of that bright purple, but and it left a bit of a, like a pool. But yeah, it's pretty clear, pretty there. If you had to recover that, I'd say you absolutely could. Now, next up is probably the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. It took one second to dry. I'm gonna try and bring this in so you can see. Notice how this writing is pretty much the same size as the broad, but this was written with the Japanese medium. There is a lot of spread, and I hope you can see that. You see where it says shading? See all that feathering? And it's pretty much like that all through, ooh, it's pretty much like that all throughout. It's, it's a mess, and there's no, no shading left at all. Uh, it gets very wooly looking. Yeah, uh, and again, for a Japanese medium, I, I'd like to see better than this, but this is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. I mean, we've got very, like that came all the way through. That looks like it, that did come all the way through. That, I mean, it, mm -mm. but also look at this water test. You can actually see that separation of blue and purple. That's pretty amusing. Now this is more absorbent paper, so it sucks the ink in, makes it harder to wash out. And that's absolutely what happened here. In fact, you can see some of that blue. Next up is Mead Notebook Paper, uh, which is thinner than 20 pound copier paper, but it actually did a bit better. If you see, it didn't have as much spread. It does have some feathering. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit wooly. Two and a half seconds to dry. And I said that there was no full bleed through, but there is significant show through. All throughout, it wants to get to the other... Okay, that I wrote with the broad. But, yeah. Considering it's it's thinner than 20 pound copier paper, and they gave this to us for free in school for our lab notebooks, uh, I'll take it. It's not bad. But, I mean, it did better than 20 pound copier paper. And that's the stuff I think we all encounter most in life, so... I'm making judgments about your life. Don't let me do that. Anyways, uh... This is a more absorbent paper, so it sucks the ink in. And actually, even though this paper generally hates water, it didn't feather and explode as much as I was expecting. That's absolutely readable. You could totally read that. If you had to recover that, yes, yes, you could. Now, lastly is Moleskin Notebook Paper, where, again, I for these three absorbent papers, I only used the Japanese medium, except to write the name, which is most certainly what happened here. I don't know if you can see that. Come on, camera, focus. It's most easy to see in the broad, but it's just as noticeable <laughs> in that Japanese medium. There is a lot of feathering, and I say that it sort of retains some shading, because I guess, I guess you kind of do, you know? I mean, like, that is darker than that, just by a touch, but... And it took seven seconds to dry, which I cannot explain, because if you look at this, you see how it looks like a sheep left out in the rain? It is so, like, gross and 
wet and wooly looking, even when it's dry, it is not flattering. So obviously it got sucked into the paper. It must have because it started feathering. Oh my god, look at feathers. Look at long. Oh my god. Jeez. But yeah, it it's it's not good. I I hate this paper. But yeah, um weirdly here, instead of getting like the clear purple and the like blue washing away and whatever, here it stayed pretty much the same color but it feathered and exploded, which is not something we saw in any of the other papers. Now, again, we have these many, many spots of it wanting to come through. In fact, the camera's not picking it up quite as easily, but it, like pretty much everywhere, yeah, it, it wants to come through to the other side, which again, you know, Japanese medium, you, you'd expect, you'd want to see a bit better than that, but it's moleskin paper. Lower your standards until you have none. Anyways, uh, oh, cat's angry, trying to get in. There you go for your consideration. There's Diamine's Imperial Blue. Oh, cat's really angry. Uh, it's purple. It's a purple. But it does this cool separating thing, uh, especially with absorbent paper. So if you're a water washer, that could kind of be, like, a cool thing if you want to play with that. Uh, slightly wet. Not... Not impressive behavior on uh, cheap papers, but uh, perfectly good behavior on fancy papers. In fact, Tumaway River, you get this great, like, black-red sheen. So, yeah. For your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.